Hello everybody and thank you very much for watching. This is me, Mr. P, and in this video, I'll show you how we can run Docker containers on a Samsung DeX. Let's begin. Like with everything in IT, if you want to do something, there is a big chance somebody already done that. And since I started to messing around with Docker containers on my Raspberry Pi, creating clusters, Kubernetes, and etc., I wondered, can I run Docker on the Samsung DeX? And I started looking online for solution how I can get this. And one day I came across this post in a, on a GitHub. He's created a post uh, with a step-by-step -step guide how you can set it up the virtual Alpine or a virtual Alpine VM running inside Termux. And then you have a Docker running inside that VM and you can set it up all sorts of containers. The VM it runs on AX86 underscore 64 architecture. And so it's a bit of a slow thing. So don't expect a high performance. But there is some things I try to run on this. Uh, no problem, Prometheus runs, uh, Node Exporter, Grafana, that's a coming video, I'll show you how you can all set it up all this. And you can use your Samsung Deck as a monitoring station for all of your services. That's upcoming video, so make sure you subscribe to my channel. And I started to go through these steps to set everything up. But then when I was scrolling down, looking through what kind of uh, problems others are getting or how other users of them, other users of this um, tutorial finding if it's easy to use or not, I came across one of the comments from the person by the nickname E. Gandro. I hope I'm pronouncing your nickname correctly. He's created a script which you run. It's a one single command. You run it and everything is getting installed automatically for you. So we're going to use his script instead of going step by step. But both of these people basically made my life so much easier just because they created this for me. Like I said, everything in IT, if you're trying to do something, there is a big chance somebody already done it for you. So we're going to click on his link. This will take to his GitHub repository. If we scroll down, we'll find a lot of commands. This is the first command is for Android phones and tablets. Second one is for Raspberry Pi OS, Fedora ARM and etc. So what we're going to do, we're going to go on here and click this command. We need to run this command inside Termux. If you go into Google Play Store to download Termux, I suggest not to do that because Termux has been deprecated from a Google Play Store. The app is still exists in the Google Play Store. You can go and download it and use it. Well, you can't use it technically because the app hasn't been updated. So it's not working as it should. The only one place where you can get the fully working Termux right now is from F-Droid uh, Store. To get F-Droid, you need to sign load F-Droid Store to your Android device. How to do that? You can find a lot of tutorials online. Just Google it, how to install F-Droid. Once you installed F-Droid and run for the first time, it will update all its repositories. And then you click on the search icon on the bottom right hand corner. Maybe this icon moved by the time you're watching this video. But if you click on this and you search for Termux, one of the results will say Termux, the Termux icon. As you can see, I'm already installed. So it gives me two options on open or uninstall, but you will install it. And once you install it, you just run Termux. As you can see, I have a Termux running. It's basically nothing in here. It's a clean install. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go back into a website. Uh, we're going to copy this command. We go back in the Termux, click and hold, select paste. And then I need to go all the way at the start because I just need to download this um, dollar sign. If you copy this command from my description, the dollar sign has already been removed. So you just copy paste into the Termux terminal. And when you're ready, just press enter. And what is going to happen now, the script will go and download all the necessary files to set it up the Alpine VM. It will start the installation process of Alpine VM using the ISO file. After installation file process is finished, it will kill this VM, delete the ISO and then start the virtual machine from installation folder. Once installation folder has been, uh, once the second step of installation has been completed, it will log in automatically into Alpine VM and will download all the necessary files to run the Docker. Once the Docker and everything else has been installed, it will automatically log out. So we'll come back when this is finished. But please note, this will take some time. So just be patient, sit down, relax, have a drink or something, and just wait when this is done. Once you see this, um, the reboot, semicolon system halted, and then a bunch of code, this means that everything has been installed. To exit that, you need to press Ctrl and then C. And then let's clear the screen. To make sure that everything is installed, if you type ls and press enter, you will see two files, or actually one file and one folder. The file is turmux-setup-sh and a folder called alpine. We need to go inside this folder. So to, to go inside the folder, you need to type cd space alpine and press enter. 
ls again uh, to list the content of this folder as you can see there is a two files in green and they are executable one is called ssh2 qemu.ssh we're not going to use that we're going to use the other one which is called start qemu.sh we will edit this file to open the port for portainer to open the port inside this file or actually edit this file you need to type nano space start and then press tab to auto complete the rest of the file name press enter and this is all the command all the commands that starts the virtual machine of alpine to open the port we're gonna go after the host fwd and remaining after two double twos we're gonna do comma and then write host fwd equals tcp double semicolon 9000 dash semicolon 9000 and that's it what that means that i'm instructing the system to open the port um, inside the virtual machine to the host host will call port 9000 which is equal inside the virtual machine port 9000 when this is done just i want to make sure that i haven't done any mistakes yeah that's when this is done you press ctrl x to save it you will get a message saying save modified buffer you press y and press enter to save it to make sure that everything is saved correctly you can type cat or cat and then type start and then press tab to auto complete press enter and it just shows your content of this file and i can see that this is here showing 9000 9000 to run the virtual machine you need to type dot slash start press tab to auto complete and press enter and what's happening now the script is starting the virtual alpine machine this will take a minute or so so just wait until all this is done once virtual machine successfully started you will be presented to with the alpine space login uh, command line to log in you need to use a default username and a password default username is root and the default password is secret123 with a capital s and i'm logged in into a virtual machine to make sure that the dock is already installed and running perfectly you can type docker space double dash version and press enter and we'll give you a version of the docker that is currently running as you can see it's a docker version 20.10.7 right now i can start installing a portainer i have a command already ready for for this i leave the command inside the description for you to go and copy and paste into the terminal if i copy this command go back into the virtual machine i clear the screen click and hold then release and press paste and press enter and right now docker will try to run the container with the name portainer but it will not find so automatically it will go and fetch this container image from hub.docker.com when this is all downloaded as you can see there is a three separate files one of them has been downloaded one of them has been extracted but i'm just gonna leave this running and when it's done i'll be back once docker successfully downloaded the portainer image extracted and started the container will be presented with the long numbers and letters code and this is the unique id for every container that will run inside my docker system just to make sure that the docker started the container properly i can type docker space ps and press enter and i will get the list of every single container that is currently running inside the terminal inside the docker system as you can see i have one container running i have container id i have container name and i can see it has been created 35 seconds ago and has been started 21 seconds ago so it's been running i will find i can see what kind of port is open we are more interested in the port 9000 so as far as i can see everything is working correctly to access the portainer i can open my samsung browser open the new tab and because i'm accessing the docker system within the same um, same device i can type localhost instead of typing instead of typing the device ip address and i'll show in a second how to do that as well i just type localhost semicolon 9000 and press enter as you can see portain is starting it gives me a couple of errors or so but don't worry about this uh, this is just because i tried all this just before recording this video so there's a caching issue of the browser so i'll be presented with a new portain installation window username i'll leave uh, username as admin i'll leave as a default and the password i will put 123 qwe and then again 123 qwe and press okay it needs eight characters okay so we're gonna do qwerty 123 and click create user once i click create user this is the page i need to be presented if you can't see this page just refresh the browser it will ask you to log in instead of create a new user and you will see this page from all these three options docker kubernetes and agent i will select docker regarding the agent in the next video i'll show you how to set it up docker 
uh, how to set portainer agent running in our tiny virtual machine, how to set up Prometheus a node exporter to track the performance of the system, and how to set up Grafana, Graf Grafana in, in virtual machine, Grafana container, which will present all the performances in a nice visually, vi visually nice visuals to show you how your system is performing. Anyway, this is upcoming video. If you want to check that video out and you don't want to miss it, make sure you click a subscribe button. I select the Docker, click connect, and here we go. I am connected inside the portainer, which is a manager of the old Docker containers that is running inside the virtual Alpine machine, which is running on the Termux, which is running on my Samsung Galaxy Tab S6, which is outputting Samsung DeX. So right now I can go inside this, and I, if I click on this Docker image or Docker instant, I'll be presented with information. As you can see, I have local, have two CPUs and one gigabyte of RAM. Um, that's how much I, the, by default the script will allow, will set up for you. You can increase the RAM uh, to, to two gigabytes, four gigabytes, etc. But I tested with two and four and more. Uh, as far as I know, my Galaxy Tab S6 has eight gigabytes of RAM. I went, I think, all the way to six gigabytes. But to be honest, no performance difference as it's uh, it was slow with two gigabytes or one gigabyte of RAM and it's still slow even if I give four gigabytes of RAM. So I left as a one. So right now, if I'm going to click on containers, I'll be presented with only one container, which is a 14. And that's what we're looking at. If I click on images, that's what I'll be presented. I have the image uh, unique and um, ID and I can see a container running. If I'll go back to a containers and click on the container name, I'll see all information. I see the port has been open, where the data is being saved and etc. To access this from outside your home network, from inside this device with any home network device, you need to punch the IP address of this device. So for example, if I'll go on my phone and I'll open Samsung internet browser and I'll type the IP address of my Galaxy Tab S6 with semicolon 9000 and press enter and I'll be presented with the logging screen, uh, just make sure there's no glare on the screen, with the logging screen of the portainer that is running on my Galaxy Tab S6. So technically I can have this tablet somewhere, it doesn't matter if it's connected to it as a DeX or not, Termux can run in the background of this on this tablet. I still can remotely connect to a portainer from any device that has a browser in my home network. So I hope this video helped. I, like I said, anything in IT, if you're trying to do something, there's a big chance someone done it already. I was spending days and days trying to figure out how I can run Docker inside the Samsung DeX. And just by sheer luck, I came across this post on a GitHub. I'll leave all the links to people who figure out how to run this in the description below for you to go and check it out. Make sure you give them credit. I'm giving them credit that they created this. Um, all the commands that I used, you will find them in the description below. I might create a GitHub repository for all the commands, just store them in one place and then it's easier for you to find. All the links basically you will find in the description below, be below the like button. Anyway, that's what I do on this channel. I test Samsung decks to a limit and beyond. If you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions about Samsung decks, you have any problems about Samsung decks, we have Samsung decks subreddit group. I will leave a link to that group to that group in the description below to, for you to go and check it out. We currently have more than 15,000 members and we're a growing community. We're helping each other to make sure that Samsung DeX just works as best as possibly can. And we're helping each other to find bugs, to fix bugs, to find workarounds, how to use Samsung DeX to a maximum potential. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.